Hey guys, welcome back. I am so incredibly excited to finally be sharing my second ever plein air painting sketchbook tour. You can find the link to the first sketchbook tour in the description below the channel. Um, before I get started, I just want to really quickly show you what material materials <laughs> I used in this uh, sketchbook. Um, it was watercolor and gouache. Very simple. And I mostly just had a little travel set with me and or grabbed a few tubes of color. And throughout this, this tour, I'm going to show you little clips of footage of when I was painting each page or um, photos or something to kind of give you context of where I was when I created uh, each painting. This is a moleskin watercolor album. I believe it's called a large and uh, basically it's five by eight inches. So let's get started. So the dates in this sketchbook go all the way back to March 26th, 2017. <laughs> it took me a really long time to get through this sketchbook, uh, but I was also working in several other sketchbooks at the same time. This was just dedicated exclusively to plein air painting. And this first page, I wanted to make it really special. So it was when I was in Scotland um, and I went to my favorite local waterfall uh, just to kind of get off, uh, started on the right foot and do something really, really just simple and enjoyable for the first page. Kind of get to get over that first page phobia. <laughs> Um, and despite it being winter, basically, it was actually really warm that day, so uh, we spent a few hours by this waterfall and sitting on the edge of the river and just painting and snacking and hanging out. It, it was really wonderful. This next page, I took a walk up to the Inverness Castle. Uh, which is actually a castle converted to be used as administrative offices and I think even a courthouse. Um, but there's a big area where you can just walk around the grounds and sit by the, um, the you can see a view down into the city uh, by the river Ness. And it's a really, really pretty view. So again, when I found a sunny day uh, during the long Scotland winter, I forced myself to go out You can probably hear the bagpipers in the background. <laughs> um, occasionally they play up at the castle. And you can actually see the full painting of this page on a different video. I'll link it uh, either in a tag or below the channel. Um, but yeah, it was, it was just a really warm day for once, <laughs> and so I forced myself to go out. And that's what a lot of these pages are, are just an excuse for me to get outside, especially during the winter because uh, it's really easy to get cabin fever <laughs> when it's uh, cold and rainy a lot. So this next spread is international. The left side was a little camping trip we did uh, near Apple Cross, and shortly after that I had to go back to Denver. So that, that was the last springtime painting in Scotland before my summer in Denver. And this next one on the right was a painting at the Denver Botanic Gardens, my absolute favorite place to paint in Denver. <laughs> and you can see a bunch of these um, were very springtime <laughs> flower oriented. And it was really, really warm and nice out for that first couple weeks I was in Denver. So I got outside as much as possible. And you can see, I basically went to the Denver Botanic Gardens uh, like almost every day for that first basically month I was there. <laughs> this sketchbook is a pretty even mix of uh, more finished pieces where I took my time and maybe spent an hour or two and stuff like this where it was really quick sketch. I was on a hike so I didn't want to stop for too long. Um, so I just kind of gave myself permission to do as little or as much as I wanted on each page and not worry too much about how it all looked in the end. Uh, it was definitely much more about the experience and trying to capture the moment 
um, and I tried to do a variety of things, not just landscapes, uh, because landscapes are my favorite, but I know I need to grow in other areas as well. But it can definitely be intimidating. Like for instance, at this coffee shop, I've never painted something like that before. Uh, especially not, you know, really unfamiliar with painting figures and people. So uh, I was just like, all right, screw it. I'm gonna grab my ink and my sketch uh, and my watercolor and just go for it. And it, it just showed me where I needed to grow more um, and kind of gave me more confidence in trying new things. Cause yeah, the final result isn't great or isn't like perfect, but in doing it, I'm, I'm learning so much. So it kind of became this really fun challenge for me to pick something I've never painted before and see what happens. <laughs> I spent some time house-sitting for a friend who lived near Denver University, so I walked there every day and tried to sketch something new. And the grounds there are just gorgeous, and there's these beautiful old buildings and stone and brickwork everywhere, fountains and trees. So it was kind of like a little painter's dream there. Uh, and it definitely was a good challenge too because of the variety. like incorporating architecture uh, and <laughs> landscapes. Uh, it was just a really good mix. It's actually kind of interesting to look back at these uh, because it's been so long, it's been over like a year. And I remember sitting by this tree and thinking, how the heck do I paint light, like dappled light on grass? And it was you know the first time I tried it uh, since then I've done it a ton so I'm more familiar with it but just like looking through this it's so nostalgic to, to remember that feeling of discovery um, so it's another really awesome way to capture your artistic journey now this was really fun it was my first ever plein air painting meetup so there were about eight of us I think and we all just went on this hike together and then sat and sketched the view uh, so it was really cool uh, at first I was really intimidated and nervous but it was very chill and I'm really looking forward to doing that more in the future I'll have to find a group <laughs> in where I live in Scotland um, since that was my first and only time doing that in Denver uh, and then I had to leave but it was just a gorgeous day out in the mountains uh, with really good company and a lot of really wonderful artists too so it was extra inspiring this red rock painting uh, was in another video I posted a while back that I'll link for you guys um, but it's one of my favorite places to paint in Colorado very easy uh, to hike and just gorgeous views so uh, just a wonderful way to get out into nature but you're still kind of close to the city it's a good place to try painting really organic strange shapes too <laughs> uh, and uh, of course I had to try painting Denver as well uh, the skyline or some old buildings I remember this day was so incredibly hot though so I didn't spend too much time uh, even though I was in the shade, I just remember I was, oh, I was melting. <laughs> uh, this painting, the, this, this scene is actually one that I've done several times to compare my progress. And in my last sketchbook tour, I talked about that. Uh, you, can, you can even see like a direct comparison of like months uh, of practice. So I had to include that in this one as well. Sometimes when I'm painting these, I feel like they're absolute failures. Like for instance, I remember painting this spread and I was like, ugh, this was awful. <laughs> but then when I look back on it, I find little things that I like about it or um, little beautiful things that happen in the watercolor when you look up close. Uh, I think that's one reason I just find this medium so magical is it lends itself really well to that very quick, abstract, um, very impressionist, and uh, just able to capture the moment, not necessarily in a perfect brush stroke, but it has a lot of energy to it. I remember someone pointed out to me that I didn't do a lot of like close-ups of flowers or, or 
things in, uh, in nature. I was like, oh, that's true. So I tried to challenge myself to do a few of those um, and it was a nice way to break up the sketchbook because I, I do have a lot of zoomed out views of, land, of nature, of landscapes, and this was a really good challenge uh, that I want to do more of in the future. Some of these pages are kind of like palette cleansers where um, I'm not really sure what I'm doing. I'm just scribbling, I guess. <laughs> uh, but then so I do end up learning something that I can take into a future painting. My brother visited and so we went to the Rocky Mountain National Park, which is absolutely epic. I highly recommend that everyone visits <laughs> at least once in their life. It's the, it's just awe-inspiring and so I knew I had to paint and I only had 10 minutes because we didn't want to stay long uh, in one spot so I scribbled the heck out of this page I wish I had a bigger brush it would have been easier <laughs> but it was also really enjoyable to spend that um, short amount of time there now this next spread was a trip up to St. Mary's Glacier in Colorado uh, in the mountains and I actually think this was the first time I did like a true gouache painting in the wild so I was kind of a noob and I was not really sure what to do so I brought my entire set of paint which was a terrible idea because the hike was really intense and exhausting <laughs> and I had this huge backpack full of stuff um, but since then I've learned my lesson and uh, it, it was just a really good learning experience so uh, I just sat into a couple different views, um, painted different things like, you know, this was a really far off view of the glacier, uh, of the, the ice that was melting down into the lake. And then I walked down to the water and did a close up uh, study of these rocks that kind of like jutted up out of the water. So uh, just a nice little variety. And it was a gorgeous day, beautiful, incredible scenery. Uh, and I, I actually discovered I really love painting with gouache in this sketchbook, more so than watercolor actually. I think the paper handles it much better and kind of nowadays I don't even really like using watercolor in these, in the moleskins. Uh, if, if you paint with like arches or really nice paper and then you go back to the moleskin, you're kind of like, oh god. <laughs> Like, oh, it's just not as nice. <laughs> so I, I definitely, I see the difference now. <laughs> you can still get some really great stuff with watercolor in, in this, uh, in the moleskins, but I think it's better for more like really sketchy stuff, if anything. So back at Red Rocks, uh, on the left side I had some time before a concert to paint so I just did a little close up of some rocks and then on the right side I was sitting in the audience ready for the Piano Guys concert which was amazing by the way. and the light was, uh, sun was setting, so the light was just really gorgeous. Um, but I decided to be really, really crazy and scribble and found out my pen was not waterproof. <laughs> but I kind of liked the results. I went on a hike to the Royal Arch, which is in Boulder, Colorado. And um, it was one of the most difficult hikes I had I did that summer. It was really intense uh, but absolutely gorgeous and uh, we got there early enough where it wasn't too crowded luckily but I just sat off to the side and did a little view uh, up at the arch and um, definitely like didn't try to get too detailed with it. I just wanted to capture the overall colors that I saw. Um, it was really vibrant red rock when the sun hit it so it was pretty gorgeous and of course the pine trees and all the greenery around it. 
my volleyball league played at the observatory park so uh, one time I got there early decided to try to paint the little observatory that they have there uh, which I think is functioning uh, although I never went inside uh, but it was kind of a cool little building and def definitely a good challenge to paint that the strange architecture the dome <laughs> Uh, and then back at the gardens, the lilies and the lily pads were all just like in full bloom. Um, it was absolutely gorgeous. So I tried to capture that, the beauty of the water and the lilies and the lily pads. In this next one, I went to the little bamboo area at the garden. And it was actually the day of the eclipse. So I spent the whole day there and got to witness the eclipse when I was there. Um, and in between, I was just, you know, wandering around painting like usual. And then my fiance at the time visited. Obviously, we're now married, but we went on a few different camping trips. This one was up in Leadville and we just were camping right by the edge of this river uh, it was like so relaxing so gorgeous and i wanted to sit there for hours and just paint everything <laughs> um and so it's a really good memory when i look at this page i just like am flooded with so much joy <laughs> and i tried to capture that with the, the vibrant colors and just like loose brush strokes uh, and we went on several hikes so i got to paint a lot actually and made sure that I, uh, since we were, I was with someone, I was with him, I didn't want to take too much time. So they were all pretty loose sketches, uh, but I think that actually made me look at things differently. And I learned a lot about light and water and um, how light comes through the trees and stuff when I worked really fast like that. <laughs> when I look back at this page, I'm just like, oh my gosh, what a hot mess. But at the same time, uh, it did teach me a lot. It was this little root that went down, um, the base of the tree went down into the water and it was really shadowy. And then the water was rushing past it. So I, I was just like, how the heck do I paint this? Um, but things like that, I think are where I grow the most. And back at the gardens, uh, because I knew I wanted to show him this beautiful place that I spent a lot of time. <laughs> um, we just wandered around for a few hours and I tried to paint things I hadn't painted before, as usual. And of course, try to get some more flower practice in, but oh, it was really difficult. <laughs> um, but luckily, uh, we still had a great time. And I remember thinking this particular painting was one of the hardest ones I had done. I don't know why, it just really made me struggle. <laughs> but that's a good thing. Towards the end of the summer, the leaves were changing and in Denver, oh my goodness, the aspen trees are incredible. So I made sure I got up into the mountains a couple times and of course painted as much as I could. So I had a few days of these really quick, uh, short hikes um, and little quick sketches trying to just capture the atmosphere, the mood, the colors of the changing leaves. And uh, it was definitely a, a great challenge. Um, and I want to go back someday now that I know more and I, I feel like I could do a better job, but I, I do look back on these with fondness because it was my last autumn in Denver before I moved to Scotland. And it's just well, probably the most magical time in Colorado. Making this video actually kind of makes me feel more homesick than I have in a long time. Um, even though I love Scotland with all my heart, I definitely miss little things like this in Denver. Oh my gosh, okay, the marker page. <laughs> uh, this was kind of a disaster, but in a good way. Uh, it was my first time trying to paint with my new Blick markers and I had no clue what I was doing but it was really enjoyable. Uh, my friend and I went hiking and I just tried to figure out how the heck to capture what I saw with the markers. Unfortunately, it did bleed through to the next page. So uh, on the next page, I had to paint something to kind of like cover it up, um, but good lesson learned, I guess. But it was the only thing I did with markers in this whole book. 
And so back in Scotland, it was winter, <laughs> but we love hiking all year round. And so um, whenever I got the chance, I would still sketch outside. And so there's various scenes where um, I only had probably 15, 20 minutes because it was so incredibly cold uh, that that's all I could really stand like sitting still for. So like these ones, even though you can't really see snow in the scene, um, it's winter <laughs> and freezing. So uh, we didn't spend too much time in one spot. Uh, so lots of my winter sketches are just really quick. These ones were gouache, so I just spent, you know, maybe 20 minutes on each one and kind of scribbled my way through it. But it was still really a, a good experience and I, I of course learned something, so there's that. <laughs> so we went to Plata Falls for the first time and it was winter, the waterfall was in full spate, it was just raging down this cliff and it split into two waterfalls which I thought was awesome and I was using gouache at this time which was actually kind of tricky because the mist from the waterfall kept falling on the page and loosening my paint um, so I had to work really fast on that one and then we just continued onto the trail uh, and even though it was winter, again, you can't really see snow, but I think the forest sort of protected this area from the snow and it was a little bit more humid and warm in there. Um, but the trees are incredible. There's these huge Caledonian pine trees there. So it's one of my favorite places in Scotland. This next page is extra special. It was actually the morning of our wedding. So I was sitting inside the Sky Redwood Hotel looking out at the water before getting ready for the day and just spent like 20 minutes painting. It was an amazing way to start the day. <laughs> and I'm so glad I have that painting to look back on and remember just all the emotions and excitement of, of that morning. After that, I took quite a break from painting because it was kind of cold that winter. <laughs> and um, so this was kind of towards spring uh, back in Inverness, uh, just walking around town, trying to capture different views and challenge myself to paint the architecture, which for me is a huge challenge. <laughs> um, and then we went camping again and we were back in our, one of our favorite places in Apple Cross. Um, so took some time each day to paint a little bit uh, this was watercolor and some of the other ones were gouache um, but it was still kind of spring so cold <laughs> enough where I needed to bundle up and didn't want to stay in one spot too much but warm enough where I was like encouraged to paint. <laughs> I decided to try a limited color palette using four colors, um, white, yellow, and two green colors. and. The final result was like very low contrast, which I thought was interesting, but the process was really fun. And then on the right side, back in Inverness, just painting uh, random architecture. There's so many cool old buildings there uh, that it is a great challenge for me. <laughs> However, I find that I have very little patience for sitting in one spot for long enough to paint something more detailed than what you see here. So I don't know, um, maybe I have to practice my patience. <laughs> And then the last page, very special, we went to my absolute favorite local forest called Relig Glen and painted this really beautiful little sunny uh, river. And I think it, we were there for about 40 minutes or less. So I actually posted this video recently. You can check it out in my videos uh, of the full painting process. But yeah, that's it. That's the whole sketchbook. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed coming on this journey with me and seeing some of the uh, or origin photos and videos. Uh, let me know if you enjoyed it and if you want to see the next one. I am about to start the new sketchbook um, next week on our, our next hike. So yeah, thanks guys and I'll see you again soon. Mm -hmm.